Hello everyone and welcome to my series of AEW on TEW 2020. Uh, the way this series is going to work is I'm not going to show you any of the backstage stuff. I'm just going to show you what's been booked. Um, you know, when someone debuts, I'll give them a little graphic. Well, for the most part, there are some people that either I just couldn't find a PNG for or I didn't really think were too deserving of that graphic. I mean, they probably should, but whatever, it's fine. Um... Uh, off screen, I will have a lesser event just so that we can get more money as well as more pop up for some people that I want to push but are unimportant right now. We'll see some of those as we go along. I will be taking into account some of the records. Um, overall, just trying to run this fairly well. We start off dark with Matt Cardona defeating Shima in just over three minutes. Dark is just going to be only matches, um, while Dynamite will have actual stories going on, Dark is just there to exist, like it Dark usually does. Diamante debuts and defeats Leva Bates. Uh, pretty good, actually, for Diamante. I'll take it. Okay, well, that 15 segment rating isn't the best, but whatever. Jungle Boy defeats Michael Nakazawa. Abaddon defeats Ivelisse, and they don't seem to click, but oh well. Sean Spears defeats Jack Evans. Maki Ito debuts, I should have a graphic of her up on the screen. And she defeats Danny Jordan with a DDT. SCU, in the longest match of Dark, defeat the Gun Club after Frankie Kazarian pins Billy. Jake Hager defeats Marco Stunt, and they don't click. And then Priscilla Kelly debuts. We have a lot of debuts, honestly. Priscilla Kelly debuts. Um, she should have a graphic up on the screen. She defeats another debut in Serena Deeb, who will not have a graphic. Um, but she is here to help mentor some people, be a road agent, and also kind of just be fodder for some up-and-comers. But it's fine. Uh, pretty good good all around and then Chris Bay debuts on the main event of Dark and he loses to Sammy Guevara but honestly his gimmick's pretty good so that's our show of Dark I'll be back after I have booked Dynamite our show of Dynamite begins with Cody in the ring he has a mic in his hand he has probably the belt just around his waist and he says AEW You've had me as your first and so far only TNT champion right now. Now I want to make sure that this title showcases the best of the best that the world has to offer. So, to make sure that happens, every single week, without fail, I will defend this championship with my heart, with my soul. Every Dynamite will begin with an open challenge to anyone who wants to try to take the TNT title from me. So, um, this is just... Starting off with an angle isn't something I'll usually do, uh, because Dynamite doesn't usually start off with angles anyways, it usually starts off with a match. I just wanted to have Cody's open challenge be that first thing every single week while he's the champion. And so, you know, having the, you know, just basically saying this, you'll know what to expect uh, every week at the beginning of Dynamite. Starts off with Cody defeating Angelico for... His defense, uh, and Helico accepting the open challenge. His partner, Jack Evans, wrestled on Dark, and Helico making his shot at the TNT title unsuccessfully. Matt Hardy then defeats Peter Avalon, who's awful. But after the match, uh, Matt Hardy, his celebration is cut short by Sammy Guevara sliding out from underneath the ring, and he hits Matt Hardy on the back of the head with a steel chair. He's yelling at him constantly, things, you know, like, you should have retired five years ago, you know, you're, you know, you're old, you can barely walk, all of that stuff that's technically true, but, you know, he's eventually saying, you know, we don't need washed up people like you, we need to look at the future, we need to look at what we have ahead of us. Sam and Guevara, he's only 27, and Matt Hardy is like 47, and his body acts like it's 60. Because Matt Hardy screwed up his back in so many ways. Screwed up his hips in so many ways. Guevara's just jawing at Matt Hardy. 
you know, he's making sure that Matt Hardy knows that, well, he's going to be taken down by Sammy Guevara, or at least that's Sammy's plan. Now the Rose then defeats Kylan King with a very quick match. And Vicky Guerrero heads into the ring, and she says, Excuse me, I know you're back there, Hikaru. I know that you're watching as Nyla Rose, as the vicious visca vixens bleh, break everyone down. You're barely holding on to that championship, I can tell. You're afraid of Nyla, aren't you? Well, you should be, because Nyla Rose is going to whoop you so hard, you'll have to drop that belt and drop out of the women's division for years. We're not afraid of you, Sheeta. In fact, we're gunning for you. Anytime, anywhere. Uh, the women's division of AEW, I'm just gonna say it how it is, it's pretty bad. It's real garbage. Um, I mean, like, you have, basically have Sheeta, you have Nyla Rose, and you have an injured Chris Statlander and Britt Baker. Plus Awesome Kong, who's filming Glow. So, you have five people, three of the, who are higher than unimportant right now, and three of them are gone for a month. Not, none of them are going to be back until after All Out. So, you know, just kind of working through that. B building the women's division up to be something really good is one of my main goals. I have a lot of different undercard women, a lot of unimportant women that I want to keep rising up. There's a lot of people that I'm very impressed with their work of in the little bit that I've seen of them because AEW's women's division is kind of bad. just going to say it straight up. It's bad. So... Lots of signings uh, to help out the women's division. Uh, we'll see some more of those in the upcoming, well, probably even next week, maybe a couple weeks after that, uh, just because this is the first week of the save, so I don't have all of my signings that I wanted to do in quite yet. Ricky Starks then defeats Trent. And then MJF, seen backstage. He's sitting in his campaign room. I just like the MJF as a, you know, as the campaigning guy. So, using that little bit of Wardlow's there. He's not rated on anything. And MJF, he starts speaking. This is a very long promo. Multiple segments. It's fine. His, ah, and saying to the camera, starts off with the, ah, good thing you finally showed up. Thought I'd booked myself for the beginning of the show, not the middle of it. Whatever, it's fine. AEW. It's a great place, don't you think? Full of indie stars from around the world. Whether they've been at it for years, like Daniels or Kenny or the Bucks. Or they're new to the scene, like myself or Jack Perry. Everyone's welcomed, accepted, and promoted in the elite wrestling program. I mean, from top to bottom. Indie guys like Adam Page and Kenny Omega are tag champs. Hikaru Shida is the women's champ. And of course, the sun... Of the son of a plumber, Cody, and Looney Tunes himself, John the Germaphobe, at the top of the mountain. When people think of AEW, they should be thinking it's the better product. The better company for the better fan, because the fans out there know that here, here in Sunny Hill, Jacksonville, everyone's better than them. Everyone's the best, and Elite recognizes Elite. They know that this company has the best in the world, and that it's the number one stop for all things wrestling. Yet look around at your champions. Someone who's not even allowed to use a last name on live TV, and the reject who stormed off because he was the worst of all of his buddies. Cody, Moxley, you guys are rejects. You're rejects from the land where everything's all bright and shiny, and you got to just relax and live life. Look around at all the talent that's not the sloppy seconds of the shiny old toy that is the Titans. Sheeta has been a fantastic champ. Paige and Kenny are the longest reigning champs of all, all of AEW. So why not MJF? Why not go for the best of the best if that's what the company's all about? Why not go for someone who's worthy of holding that title? After all, I'm better than you, John, and you know it. You're scared to face me, Jonathan. You know how every single word I'm saying is right. You know I can out-wrestle you every day of the week. 
you know that I'm simply just what this company deserves. Because AEW, no, wrestling as a whole deserves better than you, Dictator John. It deserves someone who has a rightful place at the top of the mountain, someone who's clawed his way to every single opportunity he's had, rather than coasting off of his daddy or his friends. Cody, I don't care about your selfish title. Title. That title is nothing more than a vain attempt at being more relevant than you really are. You're an executive vice president, and you're holding a title for your own company. Moxley, you have that better belt. You have the top prize in all of wrestling. So that's what I deserve. That's what we deserve. We deserve better. I love MGF's promos so much. He is fantastic on the mic. I'm just going to say it straight up. I'm strapping a rocket to him. Do I think I'll give him a victory at All Out? Probably not. But I do have big plans for MJF in the future. I say this as the current booker. He will be world champ one of these days. I just don't exactly know how soon. Darby Allen then defeats Joey Janela. Did I make a mistake? I might have made a mistake. Whatever. Uh, SC, uh, Private Party defeats SCU. Uh, Isaiah Cassidy broke his nose. Colt Cabana defeats Griff Garrison in a real quick match. And afterwards, Brody Lee, who's at ringside for the match... He rolls in, he pats Colt on the back, you know, he's whispering something to Colt Cabana, we can't really pick up what he's saying, and Colt's just like, he's just not along with it, like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, okay, we'll do that, and eventually, Brody Lee, he helps Colt Cabana off the stage, and then, uh, Colt, uh, Evil Uno and Stu Grayson, they head into the ring, they keep being down, Griff Garrison, and Colt's completely oblivious to this, he's being led on by Brody Lee, not part of the Dark Order yet, but he is working towards it. So, Brody Lee, he wants to kind of hide, shove all those other nasty things under the rug. Just, hey, Colt, come on, come on and join us. We're, we're fine here. We're all great. Wow, Evil Uno and Stu Grayson defeat, uh, beat up Griff Garrison after he's already lost a match. The Lucha Bros then defeat the Young Bucks. Um... Got plans for this, and... Okay, I did make a mistake. God, oh, they don't click. Uh, I had a whole program started for these guys. Alright, well, luckily for me, um, I can rework my storylines after I have all of my signings. So it's not the biggest problem in the world. A 70 rating. 70 rating is what I'm always going to be happy with. If we can get a 70 or higher on every show, I'll, I'll, every show of Dynamite and every pay-per-view, I'm fine with that. Uh, Dark doesn't really matter, but... I think this is a decent first show. Definitely could be better, but for starting from scratch, we're getting a few storylines brought up. I still don't have everyone that I want on the roster quite yet, but just working towards that, working towards, hopefully, some... Like, I'm... I always just start out, you know, it's a slow start, but things will pick up in time as more people become available. We'll be back for the next week of Dark and Dynamite.